All right, we get praise and steam and honor to the Most High. Y'all name of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach this day. Let's get this John chapter five, verse thirty nine. You know, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, and there they by me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of Allah in you. Do not think that I will accuse you. The Abba there is one that accused you, even Moses, in whom you trust. If I had you believe Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote a thing. But if you believe not his writings, how should you believe my words? So we're in the Proverbs 11 and 16. What are we going to do? Because there was audio problems on Shabbat. So we'll kind of start that over again to a certain extent because we didn't get to roll that in the fashion that we wanted to roll it in. So that kind of made what we went over a little bit awkward on Shabbat, to say the least, because that was not the intended track, especially considering the audio problems that occurred. So. Proverbs 11 and 16 says a gracious woman retains honor and a strong man retains riches. So we're going to go straight into that. We kind of hit all that. So forgive me if it seems redundant. I know it went for about 35 minutes before it, it gave out. So when we look at and strong, and let me get that up for you to a certain extent. Let me get slide this off real quick. Make sure we don't have no issue with that. So again, when we look at and strong, remember if you can recall the word as a rats, it's awe inspiring, terror striking, awesome, terror, terrifying, something that is mighty. So you know the way of the work of the highest. So let's look at something off the top, which shows that we want to go straight to Matthew chapter 27. Straight to Matthew 27 to get to the point of where that went down. Let's get straight off into it. Matthew chapter 27. We won't pick it up about verse uh, 50. We'll go from there. Hold on, everybody. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Matthew chapter 27, verse 50, the Yahusha, when he had cried again, with a loud voice yielded up a Ruach. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. The graves were open. Many bodies of the Kaseh, which slept, arose, came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the Kadash city, and appeared on the minute. Now, when that centurion and they that were with him watching Yahusha saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly saying truly, this was the son of Allah. So <clears throat> they see the mightiness, the terror, all of that. It said they feared greatly because he showed himself forth to be this strong man, all inspiring to say the least. We kind of referenced that a little bit. Uh, then let's go to Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. It's saying, uh, what are we going to pick it up at? Because I know we mentioned this on the Shabbat, so we're going to do it now. Daniel 10 and 4. It said, in the fourth and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hedekiah, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. Recall, he is seeing a vision of Yahusha HaMashiach. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet in color to polish brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Let's take a look at some of those things and dissect them. First, it says his face is as the appearance of lightning. Why is his face as the appearance of lightning? Pause. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Eight and one. From there, Exodus... 
34. And again, this is to, when we look at it, right, this is for us to know the work, the way of the work of the highest. So remember, Yahushua say he's the way, the truth, and the life. So we, we need to know that way that or that pathway that we ought to walk, which is the work of the highest. Because again, I'll get to it in a minute. I get to it in a minute. Ecclesiastes 8 and 1, who is as the wise man? Who knows the interpreting of a thing? A man's wisdom make his face to shine and the boldness of his face shall be changed. Now it says that Daniel seen that his face was as the appearance of lightning. It says wisdom makes a man face to shine. For time purposes, y'all know in Exodus 34 that when, let's just look at it. When Moses went up on the mount and got the wisdom. Exodus 34 and 29. Exodus 34 and 29. It says, and it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand. When he came down from the mount, Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. Notice it said he came down with the two tables of the testimony. <clears throat> Let's take a look at testimony. Because that's what caused his face to shine. He didn't even know it. Let's take a look. Let's delve under there and gain some understanding. Why is Yahushua's face appearing like lightning? What is the reason? You should be familiar with the word testimony. It is a doof. So, of course, you got the ayin, the dalit, the u, the tau. So, you know and experience the hanging or sacrifice which secures the covenant. So, what do you know? John chapter 20. This is what you know. Whole Exodus 34. This is what you know. Matter of fact, make it Romans 16. This is what you begin to know. Romans 16. Romans 16 and... And 21 is sufficient. Romans 16 and 21. You know, at the end of the day, to if you look at the testimony again, because you have the ayin and the dalit, so you know the sacrifice. See, we're going to deal with that in regards to the work and what Yahushua said the, of Elohim is. And when you see what the work of Elohim is, then everything else springs from that. Because if you're void of the work of Allah, then you're going to be void of everything else. And we definitely want to make sure that we don't serve this man in vain and get no reward whatsoever. Because then that makes doesn't make any sense. And then this is going to show how this strong man retained his riches. Because what made him strong? What made him awe-inspiring? What made him mighty? What made him fear, fearful to these people? They saw him be sacrificed. It said that that man feared greatly upon seeing that. Upon knowing or experiencing that hanging, he knew that this man was the son of Elohim. He received the testimony at that moment. Nevertheless, Romans 16 and 21. Timotheus, my work fellow, and Lucius and Jason, and so pastor, my kinsman, salute you. I, Tertius, wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. Gaius, my host, and of the whole body, salute you. Aratus, the chamberlain of the city, salute you. And Cortarius, a brother, the grace of our Lord Yahushua HaMashiach be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is the power to establish you according to my bazaar and the preaching of Yahushua HaMashiach according to the revelation, revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting Elohim, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. So Allah, he only be wise, be esteemed through Yahushua HaMashiach forever. Now, remember, we looked at that on the Shabbat. You know, Yahushua went up on the mountain transfigured and his face shone. But he didn't go up there and receive a testimony because he already had the testimony because he is the testimony. So when you look at a man's wisdom causes his face to shine, we begin to understand why Daniel sees his face shining like lightning. 
Let's come back to X chapter 34. And remember that Yahusha is made unto us wisdom. So therefore, if he's made unto you to be wisdom, and then you uh, achieve that and that dwells in you, this will cause your face to shine. Exodus 34 and 30. It says, and when Aaron and all the children of Yasharal saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterwards, all the children of Yasharal came nigh, and he gave them the commandment, all that Yahuwah had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before Yahuwah to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Yasharal that which he was commanded. The children of Yasharal saw the face of Moses, that the skin of face Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face until he went again to speak with him. Let's sit back and look at the face shown. Let's see what word we have for that. The word for shown is Quran, and it means to shine. You have Kuf, Rosh, and Noon. So you have the final chief is eternal life, or the last Adam brings forth life. Why is that important? Because he told you that in him was light, and the light was the life of men. That light was only manifested through his sacrifice, which is why he is this strong man. This is why you, the, you get to know the way of the works of the highest. You can't know the way or the works of the highest without the son. Let's see why. Because we mentioned that word. John chapter 6. We're still holding Daniel 10. We come right back to it after this. You know, give thanks to the Lord. You know, praise your Lord. He's good. His mercy endures forever. You know what I'm saying? And we know that knowledge and wisdom of Yahuwah is the amuna or the stability of our times, as it says. It's the faith of your, uh, of the, your juncture upon this earth. John 6 and 22. It says the day following when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save the one where his disciples were entered, that Yahushua went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. After that, the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Yahushua was not there, Neither his uh, disciples. They also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Yahusha. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when come you hither? Yahusha answered them and said, Truly, truly, I say unto you, you seek me not. Seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did, did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perish, but for the meat which endure unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him, Allahim, Abba sealed. Then they said unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of Allahim? Yahushua answered and said unto them, this is the work of Allahim that you believe on him whom he hath sent. This is what the Lord says is the work of Allahim. This is not my personal opinion. These aren't my thoughts. This is what the man said. Let's look at something. Let's see what we can get for work. Because when you come down to it and go to Romans chapter four, while we thinking on it, Romans chapter four, real quick. Because the work of Elohim is to believe Elohim. You understand? That's all he's saying. That's all he's really trying to impart. Make sure I'm in the right place. Romans four and one. It says, what shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, have found? For if we were justified by works, he had whereof to esteem, but not before Elohim. For what say the scripture? Abraham believed Elohim, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. You know that that's in Genesis chapter 15. Ain't no way in the world you could be able to esteem before Elohim if it was of your doings. See, look at this here. The word for word 
is malaka. This is something that we've dealt with before. So word, word for word. You have a mean, you have a lama, you have an olive, you have a kaf, and then you have a hay. So you can look at it in this regard. You're going to behold the teaching of strength of the palms, blood. However you want to look at it, you're going to see that this man has, this man with raised arm has taught you through his blood what that strength is. Takes you back to trusting Yahuwah forever. For trusting Yahuwah is everlasting strength. This is why Hamashiach is making this statement. What is the works of Elohim that I might work it? He say, believe on him whom he have sent. That doesn't require anything from you, but for you to believe the scriptures in your heart and then live them because what? The just live by their faith. This is what it is. It's really just that simple. Because as we stated before, Yahuwah doesn't have any need of any of us to do anything. Yahuwah is Yahuwah with or without us. That has to be understood and known. That's a level of pride in our hearts to feel like Yahuwah needs us. He doesn't need any of us. And we're completely foolish if we believe that he needs us. Why would the creator, creator need his creation? What does he need his creation for if he created it? That doesn't mean that he doesn't use men. And this man doesn't use donkeys. This man says in Psalms 19 that the heavens preach the gospel. So he doesn't need us for anything. We're in need of him. We need breath of life and salvation from him. We owe our own exist, whole existence to him. He doesn't owe us anything. See, let me show you something. Let me finish this right here. Right? He said, now to him that his work is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So then it's not extended for you for favor. Because now you're saying you who will owe you. And you have to be careful with that because Yahuwah don't owe any of us anything. How do we know Yahuwah don't owe us anything? Because all of us have sinned and come short of the esteem of Elohim. So why does he owe you salvation? What does he owe you? He don't owe you nothing because he could have killed you a long time ago. He said, but to him that work not, but to him that believe on him that justified the ungodly, his faith was counted to him for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessedness of man unto whom Elohim impute righteousness without works, saying, Baruch are they whom iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Baruch is the man to whom Yahuwah will not impute sin. Let's look and see where he got that from. Because a word that we're going to look at that's going to be integral in what we're dealing with this week with a strong man retaining his riches is contained in that passage. So therefore, we need to go to Psalms 32 right now of where he got this from. Of what Paul was quoting. Psalms 32 and 1. Baruch is he whose transgression, trans, transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man under whom Yahuwah impute not iniquity, and in whose ruach there is no God. Listen to what he said, right? Now look at what he said, right? Now what makes a man blessed that Yahuwah does not impute under him iniquity? What makes a man blessed that Yahuwah doesn't impute unto him iniquity? Let's take a look. Let's take a look at something. Come over here to Matthew, man. Is it Matthew? It's Luke 23. Come take a look at this here, man. Blessed is the man who you don't got to do nothing. That doesn't mean that you don't have to keep Torah. That means that you don't have to do anything to get salvation because it's a gift from Yahuwah. This is why he says if he was to mark iniquity, who will stand? But there's forgiveness with Yahuwah that you might fear him. He ain't going to mark every sin because if he did, everybody's done. But that's all. Come on, man. Nino be want to have that conversation because you can't lift yourself up. Why you think he said in Luke 18 that he would justify the man who wouldn't even lift up his eyes to Shamahim but smote himself on the chest and say, have mercy upon me. I'm a sinner. Nevertheless, Luke chapter 23, right? Because we just had a conversation with uh, somebody about this here, right? Luke 23 and 41. Thank 
Oh, my bad. 39. Luke 23 and 39. He said, and one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, if you be the anointed one, save yourself and us. That's just like somebody who eat. That's just like somebody who eat because they feel like you need to prove yourself. He said, but the other answer rebuked him, saying, do you not fear Elohim, seeing you are in the same condemnation? And indeed, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man have done nothing amiss. And he said unto Yahusha, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Yahusha said unto him, truly I say unto you, today shall you be with me in paradise. Could you not say that blessed is this man who iniquities are forgiven? What did he do? <coughs> What did he do? Did he do anything? He didn't do nothing. Nevertheless, back to Psalms 32. And again, that's not to say that you don't have to keep Torah, because if, if that's what you get from that, then I would just say that you're a person who's hearing what you want to hear. That's what I'm going to take. From, that's what I'm going to take if that's what you heard. Because at the end of the day, that's all you want to do is you want to preach Torah 24 7, 365. That ain't the good news. That ain't the good news. The good news is the gospel of Yahusha, whether brothers like it or not. The good news ain't you knowing you, Israel. Let's keep going. He said, When I kept silent, my bones whacked old. Through my roaring all the day long, for day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Say, La, pause. Y'all already know what that is. This is when this man getting ready to die. He praying. Man say he sweat so hard, look like drops of blood. He said, Acknowledge my sin unto you, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgression unto Yahuwah. You have forgave the iniquity of my sin. Say, La. This is what he did. He, is he talking about repentance. This man ain't even talking about. See, Paul, let me show you what this is. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. And again, to show you how a strong man retains his riches. Because Yahushua came and confessed the iniquity of Yasharal before Yahuwah and asked for what did he say? I will forgive. They don't know what they do, correct? Is that not what he said? So this is what you sin. See, but everybody thinks it's just knowledge and this, that, there, and the third. This to know your God. You do realize that it's just like this here, right? You were sitting in there when they asked me that about uh, what bro talking about how long should he not have sex with his wife? You wasn't in there when when uh, Glover and Dwight asked me that for being one. Mm -hmm. See, and the reason before they asked me that, and that's not nothing against me, I was like, what what difference does it make? Does he even serve you? What difference does it make how long his wife is unclean for, and he don't serve you? The reason why I said that is because this ain't his household. He don't live in this house. So this man's not his father. So the rules of his of this man's this man right here don't apply to him because he's not a member of this household. Because if you're a member of the household, you would need to know the ways of your father. Why would you know the ways of your father? Because your father would have took the time to teach it to you. So then therefore that would have it seemed harsh when a nigga said, it, but that's why I'm saying that. Because you're not a part of this household. So that doesn't necessarily apply to you because you're breaking this rule and this rule of this man, which takes us back to 2 Kings 17, when he sought the lions on them people, when they were not knowing the manner of the God of the land. Because you dwelling in my house and you don't know the rules of my house. You know what I'm saying? So I got to come see you by that. Now, when we look at it on a natural level, they may have been having a conversation in that regard. Because when they walked up, I thought they were talking about lifting weights, so I went to rain on them. You know what I'm saying? But that's what, what they were talking about. Because I ain't seen I ain't seen the dog anymore. I had busted balls. You know what I'm saying? But just using that as an example, you have to be a member of a household for the rules of that household to apply to you. You know what I'm saying? But you can't become a member of the household until you acknowledge to your father that I've been a bastard in your house. I've been a rebellious son. I ain't been listening. I acknowledge my error. And then it's your father's discretion to forgive you. You don't have to do no. You can do a whole bunch of stuff and y'all still don't forgive you because you haven't acknowledged that you were contrary to him to begin with. 
or you don't even trust and believe in the expectation of reward I have to give to you. And you think that if you do this, then I have to reward you when you were disobedient to me from the jump street. See, it don't work that way. It don't work that way. You have to acknowledge the disobedience and that he is who he is and he has what he has before you can even begin to do works in regards to the things that are pleasing to him. So then we have to ask ourselves, are we doing things pleasing to Yahuwah or are we doing things pleasing for ourselves? Nevertheless, where was I at? I think I finished that in Luke. I was going somewhere else, but I don't recall. We go back to Psalm 32. Though. Psalms 32 and 6. It says, For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto you in a time when you may be found. Surely in flood of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. That just take you back to the beginning with Noah. He said, This is what everybody godly is going to pray while Yahuwah can be found. See, that man told you to seek the kingdom first. Seeking the kingdom ain't seeking nothing on this earth, man. He said, set your affections on the right and, and Shamahim, where the son of Elohim sit on the right hand. That don't mean that you, you can't do or have things in this life. Have proper perspective and understand what he's imparting, that the things in heaven ought to trump anything on the earth, period. For one reason and one reason alone. Go to this, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This is the one reason why we, the things in heaven, being concerned about what's in heaven trumps being on the earth. Just one reason. Oh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 is what it is. Not 5. 4 and 14. Make it 4 and 13. 2 Corinthians 4 and 13. He said, we have the same Ruach of faith according as it is written. I believe, therefore I have spoken. We also believe, therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Yahusha shall raise up, up, up us also by Yahusha and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes that the abundance of grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound into the steam to the steam of Elohim, for which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction is but for a moment, work for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of esteem. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That's the reason why you got to set your mind in heaven. Because the things that's on this earth that can be seen, they temporary. You can't even be concerned with nothing that's temporary. Because it'll go away. And the minute you begin to think and attach yourself to things that are temporary is the, begin the beginning of a mental and spiritual decline. That's what's going to occur. But if you attach yourself to the things which are not seen, which are the things that are eternal, then there will never be a decline. Because you're built up on the things which be in heaven. The things which are of Elohim. And we have to understand that and know that. And, and, and work in that regard. Back to Psalms 32 though. Verse 7. He said, you are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall compass me about with songs of deliverance. Say, Lot. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Let's look at that. I will guide you with my eye. You should already know what teach is. That's what we talked about when we were referring to buy the truth and sell it not. Well, instruct here is different. It's, so it's a different word. It's sakal, in which is the word to be prudent or to be wise. So he will instruct you or he will cause you to be wise. Teach here is yara. 
which is to shoot forth and to cast or to teach or to instruct. But when he says he'll guide you with his eye, that word is your eyes. It means to advise, to counsel, to consult, to give counsel, to devise, and to plan. Yod, Ayin, and Saad is what you see. God. Yeah, for God, yes, sir. I thought I already had that written down. And I do. And all it is is to know the work of the way. Same thing that we already looked at, right? That's all it is. To know Yahusha, period. To know what his work was. And what is the work? He said to believe on him who he has sent. That's what he instructed you to do. No, you got people be arguing. Do you believe Yahusha? Do you this, that, that, and the third? Man, in 2019, man, bump that conversation. Nigga, if you don't believe it now, well, may it be Yah's will that you catch it. And if not, let it still be Yah's will. Because nigga ain't got no time to be arguing with you, man. You know what I'm saying? You have to sit back and look at that, man. If that's what people own, man, then leave them be in what they own. Who cares? Let them stay on that. But this is what it is. So when you look at that is that you are a leader of a household or the strong man of the household, the man who is mighty, then you would need to know the works of the way. Because how else are you going to be able to guide the house? Because remember, we were talking about that in regards to ball. Because this is how this strong man is retaining his riches. Let's take a look at Simon. Isaiah 55. Matter of fact, Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 and 1. We still holding Daniel 10? Because I got to I, I gotta get to his eyes being his lamps of fire. Most how willing we get to that in a minute. All right. All right. Sit down and be quiet. Isaiah 55 and 1. He say, ho, everyone that thirst come you to the waters. And he that have no money come you buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. This is what he tell you. He said you can come buy wine and milk without money and without price. You ain't got to spend nothing for it. Remember what Yahusha said. Freely you give it. Let's look at it. Matthew chapter 10. We come right back. We just hold in Daniel 10. That's all we got. That's all we got on standby. Daniel 10, I mean Matthew 10 and 5. He said, These twelve Yahusha sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and in the way of the Samaritans enter you not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Yasharal. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of Shamahim is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out the devils. Freely you have received, freely give. All that do is take you back when you're talking about, because he said cleanse the lepers. If some of you have been around for a while, you remember. That's Alicia and uh, whatever his brother name is. His name, his name escapes me at this time. His servant. Who decided that he wanted to get money from the, from the Syrian uh, captain who they cleansed. But he told him it's a time to get money and it's a time to get clothes because freely given, freely you have received. So what is he talking about? He's talking about if y'all that gave you the power to heal sick and cleanse lepers and raise the dead and cast out devils, ain't no need to charge them people for that. Say, come on down here and you can get wine and milk without price. Ain't going to cost you nothing because you who it gives freely. Understand that. You ain't got to pay your who for nothing. Nothing. Because that's why he is the uh, Allahim. That's why he don't remember what, what John the Baptist told the scribes. Man, you can come back to uh, Isaiah 55. He said, don't think within yourselves that you got Abraham to a father because you're who are able of these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Please know he don't need you, nigga. And we'll deal with that, y'all willing, throughout the week. Just trust and believe that. He don't need you. But see, a lot of people want to be catered to. Want to be pacified. That's why you sissified with the word. Niggas worrying about everything, but getting that ruach. Well, don't you know if you don't leave, if you leave here without that ruach, well, you going to hell. That man said, if you don't have a ruach on my shop, you don't belong to him. You're not of the household, son. You're not of the household, son. 
He's not going to look you in your face and say, that's my son. He's going to say, depart from me. You work of iniquity. I never knew you. See, you can't get that rule out from them laws, man. That man ain't going to look at you and say that when he see you. But I don't know want to hear that because that don't make you feel good on the inside. Maybe he told you that. That's right. We, I think I finished wrong before, but it take you back to what's in First Corinthians. He say, let him that esteem, esteem in Elohim, that no flesh can esteem, that no flesh can glory. You who need to get all the esteem. Not you doing what you want to do and then feel like you can back though you who with esteem while you get the esteem for yourself. That's not how they work. I say at 55 and 2. He said, wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which satisfied not? Hearken diligently unto me. Listen to what he said. He said, you need to listen. Eat you that which is good. Now he said, you need to eat that which is good. So you need to eat from the tree of life, man. That's what you need to do. And let your soul delight itself in its fatness. Incline your ear. Come unto me here and your soul shall live. Listen to what he tell you. Is he telling you you need to do anything or do he tell you you need to listen? So when he's telling you to listen, what's the first passage in Torah that's going to that's gonna point us to if he's telling us you need to listen? Shema. That takes you right back to Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4, is it not? Hear ye, Yashar, O Yasharal, you who are your Elohim is one, and you are to love him with the whole mind, the whole heart, the whole soul, and all your strength. That's faith. This is what he's telling you over and over again right here in this passage. He told you to do what? Hearken. Eat. Let your soul delight. Incline the ear. Come to me. He said, but you won't come to me that you might have life. He said, I know you. The love of Elohim ain't in you. He said, your soul will live if you come unto him and hear. He said, I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even with the show of mercies of David. That's why we're going. Second Corinthians chapter 7, in regards to I confess my iniquity and I'll be sorry for my sin. I thank the Lord he brought it back to my mind. Second Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 8. You know, Yahuwah is good and his righteousness endures forever. That righteousness being Yahusha HaMashiach, everlasting life exists within that name. Come on to the throne of grace while there is time and get mercy. But nobody will to do that. That sounds too much like right, man. That sounds too much like right, man. Nevertheless, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8. He said, for though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle have made you sorry, though it but with four seasons. See, that's a masculine man, unapologetic. If I told you the truth because you was wrong and that made you sad, nigga, I'm not apologizing for that. And that's what people's problem is. You're sensitive when you're in the wrong. You're sensitive when you're in error. You, how can you be sensitive and you wrong? How can you want somebody to apologize for telling you you wrong? Nigga, you wrong. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The number one thing that black people despise is accountability. And just the same way that we can talk about how a woman carries and conducts herself, this house of people. This body of people conducts themselves in the same fashion. It's always, I told little homie this, this morning, man. I said, I find it interesting that most Hebrews say the black woman is rebellious. She don't listen. She just that there in the third and they behave in the same fashion of the same woman who they do not care for. You know what I'm saying? Because it's representative of you. That woman is, is a reflection of you, man. The woman you choose is a reflection of you. You know what I'm saying? So if this woman is rebellious and stubborn and don't listen, you might need to look at yourself, man, and see what you got going on. Make sure your stuff is in order because she very well just might be a shining reflection of you. Which just might be. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, you good, man. I already know you out here in these streets, man. You know what I mean? So she just might be. Or you just don't know how to recognize the way, or you rushed with that woman, didn't take your time to get to know her. And, and, and therefore, you know, you, you missed out on certain character traits and it bit you in the butt. Nevertheless, he said, now I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance. For you were made sorry after a godly manner that you might receive damage by us and nothing. For godly sorrow work repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. 
but the sorrow of the world were death. See, you have to say, but godly sorrow, well, that done there make you save your soul. That done there save your soul, because that's what they, that's why you say the show mercies of David. David had godly sorrow. He was so he would move with so much sorrow and shame for going against his Elohim that when he repented, that would make his soul get delivered. Why do you think he say I ain't gonna put you to death? Because he already knew what type of heart this man had once he would point it out. Boy, you know you're wrong, right? You know you're wrong. It's just like it earlier. He 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 get caught the fish tank. Like, boy, you wrong. You know what he said? I'm not wrong. Oh, you wrong. You're dead wrong. But we just use that as an example because he's a child. You know what I'm saying? That's what a child's going to do. These y'all grown people, you grown men and women, and you be like, this, I ain't did nothing wrong. You're dead wrong. You know what I'm saying? You cannot grow and move past the situation and circumstance until you acknowledge the error. You know what I'm saying? We expect that from babies. We expect that from toddlers. But we call ourselves grown people raising these very same children of whom you get upset with when they manifest the very behavior that you continually manifest. And you think you who in Shamahim is pleased. That just makes no sense. Back to Isaiah chapter 55. I told you we had this all set it up because we, we, we couldn't get it how we wanted to once the, uh, we started having technical difficulties. But you will be praised regardless. So let's look at verse four, right? Because that's all we want. He said, behold, I've given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. So this man who he's given that you could, that you need to listen to to get the sure mercies of David is a leader to the people. The word is Nagid, means leader, ruler, chief, captain and prince. Noon, Gamal, Yad and Dalit. But let me take a look at witness. Because I want to talk about witness a little bit. Because he said he's going to give him for a witness to the people. That word for witness is ed. Same word short, a little bit short, or odd. Same word for testimony with the adu, just with them two characters, ayin and dollar. You're going to know that sacrifice. That's your witness. That's your witness. Once you saw that, that what, and that takes us back to what we read in Matthew 27, because when he seen that man get sacrificed and he seen he was a strong man, he bear witness, this is the son of Elohim. Because Dan, you told you how this man was going to be sacrificed, but not for himself to make a rec reconciliation for sin and make an end of iniquity and to anoint the most kadash and to seal up division. Joel told you about it. He's a witness. The witness is the sacrifice of Yahusha. If you ain't got that, you ain't got no witness. First John chapter 5, though. And all this is still referring back to what makes Yahusha that strong man and how he retains his riches. But we'll get to the retaining of riches, the retention of riches, if you will. Y'all willing on the Shabbat. You know, we thank the Lord that uh, he didn't let the works of his hands come through here and damage nothing up through the state. Well, any other saints dwell. Hopefully ain't no saints catch no uh, catch too much of wreck down there in the Bahamas because uh, it looked like y'all wasn't too pleased with them. I ain't never heard of a hurricane just come over a state, uh, a, a, a location and just stay there. You know what I'm talking about? Don't even move. Oh, yeah, he wasn't pleased. They had something going on there when he wasn't pleased. I ain't never heard of a hurricane to say, you know what? We're going to park. Because they thought that thing was going to be here like Sunday. That's why they canceled the game, really. You know what I'm saying? They thought that was going to be here Sunday, Monday, you know, maybe Tuesday or later. Well, that nigga slid through here by Wednesday. Ain't even fly through at all. Then he had to go 60 miles up off the coast further. So that just let me know. When you were ready, boy, it's going to be ugly around these parts. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be ugly around these parts when he ready. Because, boy, it wasn't nothing but a regular thunderstorm thing. Everything could have continued. Not a lick of thunder, no lightning, no nothing. Just a little bit of rain. But at the same token, all that shows you is that you're not in control. Because you had to pause what you had going on for your whore because you're not in control. You know what I'm saying? That's what I had to show you. You're not in control. You're not in control. Everybody upset because, you know, it felt like they put what they want to have going on on pause. But that stunt just show. But what you going to do when the plagues come? What you going to do then? You know what I'm talking about? What you going to do then? All this show you is that Yahuwah is in control. 
And if you're who is in control, then submit yourself under the right hand of his will. Because ain't nothing you can do. That's why he tell you don't take no thought for your life. And which one of you by taking one thought can add one cubit to your stature. That's why he tell you don't boast not on tomorrow because your life ain't but a vapor. Let you know you're not in control. The only thing you control is your obedience or disobedience to your who's word. Outside of that, you are not in control. Nevertheless. First John 5 and 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of Elohim is greater. For this is the witness of Elohim which he testified of his son. He that believe on the son of Elohim have the witness in himself. Oh, so if he got the witness in himself, you know what that takes us back to? What we already read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. When Paul said, if my outward man perish, yet my inward man is renewed day by day. Because his outward man was perishing because Yahusha perished outwardly. But the Ruach rose him from the dead. Because he knew the sacrifice. He knew the hanging. That's what that is. That's how you have the witness in yourself because you've mortified your members according to the word. And this is why he say the work of Elohim is to believe on him whom he has sent. Period. It's just that simple. Anything outside of that, at the end of the day, man, Proverbs 16 say, you who have made the wicked and the just for his pleasure. So everything and everyone is for the esteem of Elohim, period. See, let me tell you something, man. If you didn't know this here in, the, in Amos, the fourth chapter, you find it for yourself. Yahuwah said he declared to a man what his thought is. Well, you ain't in control of nothing, my nigga. But we're going to get to that on the Shabbat when we go to get a little bit further into the play. Well, you ain't, you ain't control, but you ain't in control. Because some of you niggas is made for death and got fringes on to the feet. You know what I'm talking about? Hebrew garment, Hebrew name, all that, and you earmarked for death. Just don't think that all the nations earmarked for death because some of these brews earmarked for death too. But see, you don't like to have that conversation because you want to believe everybody righteous unless it's an organization you don't like. Some of the people you like going to hell. Y'all forbid it's anybody who can hear the sound of my voice at this moment or later. But nobody don't want to have that conversation because at that point you're going to have to acknowledge Yahuwah. And when you have to acknowledge your who, that means you have to let go. Things is a lot smoother when you just let go and just give yourself completely over to your Elohim the same way his son did. But see, if you would have known his sacrifice, then, then nobody would have had to tell you that. This is why he say when you receive the Ruach, you have no need that any man teach you. Nevertheless, he said, he that believe on the son of Elohim have the witness in himself. He that believe not Elohim and made him a liar because he believed not the record that Elohim gave of his son. And this is the record that Elohim has given unto us, eternal life, and this life, and this life is in his son. He that have the son have life. He that have not the son of Elohim have not life. These things have I written unto you that you may that you believe on the name of the son of Elohim, and that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you believe on the name of the son of Elohim. See, if you ain't got Yahusha, you ain't got nothing. You know, people don't like to hear that. But it's the reality of the situation. If you don't have Yahusha, you don't have nothing. So when we take ourselves back to, and that was just us dealing with the word for witness. But now we look at the word for leader. Well, let me see this word for people. Uh, we'll deal with that later. Different type of comments, different type of word there. We'll come back to that later. And Commander is Saaba. And that's someone who gives orders, lays charge, give charge unto, sa, you know, ooh, and hey. So what is it? Behold the way of the nail. So, and this is, again, this is dealing with the man being the head, because he the one who got to give charge. Remember, the head of the man is a mashiach. He gives order and gives charge because of his sacrifice. But let's deal with command, uh, with leader. Again, it's Nagi. It's the leader, it's the ruler, the captain, the overseer. So we can sit back and see how the work of the sun will gather you to the door. We can sit back and also look at how the uh the that the messenger's actions give you entrance to life. Because when you look at that noon, you know you got life. 
When you take on this Gamal, you know you got the messenger. You look at this Yah, you see you got that word. And now you got that dollar and you can say you got that sacrifice. All in regardless of what the leader knows the son. Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And again, this is what makes this him a strong man in order to retain his riches. This is also setting up because we dealt with a gracious woman retaining honor. And we mentioned Ball in regards to uh, the husband, because, you know, the husband is the owner, the, the, the Lord of the house. Regardless if women like to accept it in our culture, a woman is a possession. That's why that's why a husband is called Ball. Or the Lord or the owner, because he's the owner of that possession. It's just what it is. If an individual doesn't like that, you're going to have to take that up with you, because I ain't got nothing to do with that. Uh, first Corinthians 11 and 1. Because like when you look at Deuteronomy 24 and 1, because me and my home were talking about it earlier, and you see that it says, and married her. The word is fall. And Deuteronomy 24 and 1 for married her, to possess her own. Says when the Ish have Lakat or uh, Isha, he baals or he owns her, he possesses her. He takes a crawl of possession. This is one of the reasons why he tells you to cherish and honor your wife, because you ought to cherish. Niggas cherish and honor their material possessions more than they honor and cherish their spouse, which makes absolutely no sense. First Corinthians eleven and one. He said, be you followers of me, even as I also am of Amashia. Now I praise you. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Amashia, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Amashia is Elohim. So Hamashia is our leader. And again, this is taking us back to Baal. Now you who are willing on the Shabbat we're going to delve into these things with guiding, teaching, leading more in depthly with Yahusha so that we can see as men how we're supposed to do the same. Because I mentioned to you this again because of the brother made brother made mention again about Jay-Z's comments about the man did not say that being raised in a single parent household is what gets you killed by the police. That's why you can't go by titles of, of articles. You actually have to read and hear what people say. This is why the law tell you not to run with a multitude to do evil. Because he also tell you, you're a fool if you speak on a matter before you hear the entirety of it. What the man said was this, and you could go verify this for yourself. He said, coming up in a single parent household, my daddy left. He said, I hated my father. I was mad with him. He said, therefore, it made me not have respect for male authority. So he said, when you go in the street and you see the police and he's saying, hey, you stop. He said, the first inclination is to say F you, which leads to negative interactions with them. And that is factual. Whether niggas want to accept it or not. And the reason why I mention that is because niggas treat the police the same way women treat men. You catch an attitude when this person says something to you. This ain't about the police per se. It's about the fact that because a man is not there, you don't have the honor and respect for another man, irregardless of his occupation. So because you don't have that honor and respect for another man, you have feminine interactions with other men because you didn't have them to show you how to navigate and have a conversation with another man. You automatically catch an attitude like a woman. Because you feel like this man doesn't have the duty or right to say anything to you. A man would not teach his son to behave in that fashion. Look what Yahusha taught you. Come to Matthew chapter 5. Just look how the Lord taught you how to interact. And let's just see how stupid these niggas is when they run their mouth. Because this is what your daddy taught you. Niggas run their mouth. Look at what your father taught you. That's all I'm going to show you. Just look at what your father taught you. Get the right verse. And I told you, I had this happen to me myself. It's, it's Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. Because the very thing we finna read, I experienced this. And this word, Yah is my witness before whom I stand, came to my mind. 
That's how I knew that Yahuwah was real. I knew Yahuwah was real before that, but that was just more confirmation for me. And that he literally teaches like a father to a son so that you can understand, son, this ain't what you do. This is not how you behave. Nevertheless, he said, you heard of the old time. You heard that it was said by them of old time, you shall not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, whosoever is angry with his brother without call shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall take to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say you fool shall be in danger of hellfire. He say, therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that your brother have all against you, leave here your gift before the altar and go your way first and be reconciled to your brother. Then come offer your gift. Now, listen what he say. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are in the way with him. Lest at any time the adversary deliver you to the judge and the judge deliver you to the to, to the officer and the officer cast you into prison. Truly, I say unto you, you shall by no means come out thence till you have paid the utmost fathering. Now, usually when the police stop a nigga, what's the first thing that we, we intend to say? What you stopping me for? Come over here to uh, Proverbs 25 and 8. I ain't did nothing wrong. I understand that. But look what the, what the Lord told you to do. He said, agree with him quickly, didn't he? What does book of Proverbs say? A soft answer do what? So then again, he's showing you as a man how to deal with somebody who's against you. A woman can't teach you that. And that's what Jay-Z point was. That's all his point was. There's not a man there. You begin to have angst and disrespect for male authority. So you go and translate that to someone. And you know the difference is? See, the black man tolerates the black woman's disrespect. See, Mr. Charlie don't tolerate it. And you shock when he don't tolerate that. Because yo, you watch your people put up with that. This is meaning we're moving with wisdom. That doesn't absolve the police for the for the for the tomfoolery that they be out here doing. But you can't control them in what they do and how they think. And that's our problem. Because you want Mr. Charlie to love you. You want Mr. Charlie to hug you and say, Well, I'm sorry for killing you. You know, I love y'all. Here's a kiss and a hug, son. They don't fool with you, man. Get over it. They don't fool with you. Now, if you know they don't fool with you, now it's on you to move in wisdom because you know they don't fool with you. And a man, look here, man. One thing I like to say, right? My dad ain't teach me too much of nothing. But he did teach me how to interact with these people. But I had my granddaddy for my first 10 years of living. So I had already had 10 years of having respect for male authority. Were there times where I cussed the pol like police out of my youth? Absolutely, with no hesitation and no regard. Do you know what I'm talking about? Because I did not fear them, because I just saw them as a man. I didn't have that level of fear or angst for them. Was, was it the wisest thing to do to snap on them like that? Absolutely not. But the verse that we read, that we mentioned in Matthew 5.25, I'll tell you the story. I ain't told it in a while. I was at my homegirl house. I had just got out of prison, just dealing with the word. She stayed in apartments right by a uh, university park library. I'm walking back to the house. We stayed in Sundance. I see the police coming from the direction of Sundance, going like back towards JU. I see them loop back round. I know they finna come fool with me. In my mind, I'm like, well, I ain't doing nothing wrong. I'm finna snap on this track. And the first thing came to my mind was this verse right here. Off the top, I heard it clear as day. And when I heard it, I said, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. I said, I know this ain't come to mind for no reason. Because let's say I would have acted a fool. I could have been, I could have went to jail. I could have been beaten. I could have been shot. And I should have been shot because he gave me the instruction on what to do. And I disregarded it. So that's why I should have been shot. Because you who had told me what to do. And I chose to do what I wanted to do. And I ought to die for that. That's how I see it. That's how I viewed it in the moment. And that's how I view it right now. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if it's the police or not. I don't care if it's the man next door. I don't care if it's the man at the grocery store. Every man is due his respect till he shows you that he is not a man. And if you was raised by a man, you would know that. Every man is due his respect. You don't disrespect a man for no reason whatsoever, male or female. But a woman's not going to teach you that because she wants to be equal or greater to that man. 
So she doesn't have that respect for male homogeny, and therefore she ain't going to teach her son to have it. And since his daddy ain't there or another man ain't there to teach it to him, he grows up without it. And that's why he feels that way about his own brother, why he ready to kill you, why he ready to punch you, why he ready to say a nigga ain't going to do nothing to him. I kill me a nigga. But see, nobody want to have that conversation because you're going to have to check yourself and where your parents failed you and where you failing your own son. But it's easier to blame your adversary. I'm not worried about them white people. And we need to stop being worried about them. Because you can't control what they do. Stop worrying about them and what they do. Start worrying about your Elohim and how what you do for him. Screw them people. They're going to do what they do. They serve in their purpose. We spend too much time worrying about them and getting validation and appeasement from them that we ain't getting no better. Stop worrying about them people, man. That's whole stuff. Worrying about another man. What you worry about this nigga for? Proverbs 25 and 8. He said, go not forth hastily to strive, lest you know not what to do in the end thereof. When you see, now I'm going to say this here, right? Of all the videos I done seen of somebody getting shot by the police, that brother in Minnesota was the only one who wasn't striving. That brother who got shot on the live with his old lady in the car, that brother was not striving. That brother ain't had no attitude. The people were dead, dead wrong. They were dead wrong for killing a lot of niggas. But they was really dead wrong for killing bro, because bro was compliant. You know what I'm saying? They're going to have to pay for that. Yeah, and the girl, she was calm and They were both calm. They handled the situation with wisdom. Unfortunately, it didn't work out well for them, because you can handle situations in wisdom and still die. But listen to what he said, right? He said, you don't need to go forth hastily to strive unless you don't know what to do in the end. So, and I'm mentioning this here, again, this does not absolve the police from what they're doing. But when you go to strive with somebody and then they react in a way, now you don't know what to do in the end. Now you end up dead. I'm talking about those who serve you. I ain't even talking about some sinner because a sinner's going to do what a sinner is going to do. But our father has taught us what to do to stay in peace and avoid these situations. And that's all I'm dealing with. What did our father teach us to do? Because we sons and daughters in his household bump with a nigga doing outside our house. That's on them. What did your father tell you to do? Your father told you not to argue with them people. Your father told you not to strive with them people. He said when your neighbor have put you to shame. Because that's what's going to happen. So that means you got to follow your father. That's why he told you hearken. I will give you a leader and a commander. Your leader and commander told you when your adversary come, agree with him quickly so he can leave you alone. That doesn't make you weak. That doesn't make you a coward. That makes you wise because you're not going to win that battle. He done told you this. He done told you this. And as a leader of a household, this is what you teach your household what to do when to do it, and how to do it. And therefore, that you are ensured to have the highest level of success possible in that situation and circumstance. That's a man's job. That's why he said the head of the man is a mashiach. So if a mashiach taught you to agree with your adversary quickly, then that means that's what he taught you, right? Because he's your leader, correct? So if that's what he taught you, guess what you both to teach your son? But if you ain't there to teach your son that, who gonna teach him that? Can the woman teach her that? No, she ain't got no head to teach her. So he going to teach him that she ain't got no man to teach her. But the woman say, I don't need no man. We can we can learn the scripts. We can teach the women in the church. You a lie from hell, woman. You a bald headed liberal hoe. That's what you is. It's not your duty. That's not your job. Of course, you know, well, if men ain't stepping up, they don't mean you stand your butt up, sit butt down and you wait on your whore like you're supposed to. You're a bald headed liberal hoe. That's what you is. And that's what our problem is. You won't call them women what they is. You won't tell her she a liberal woman. You won't tell her she a feminist. And you won't tell her she a hoe. Because you worried about a nigga saying he hates women. Nah, nigga, you hate women. Because you won't correct her. So you the one really hate a woman. You hate women because you won't stand up and be a man. And lead, direct, and correct her accordingly in the love of Elohim. You the one hate women, nigga. I don't hate women because I'm going to lead her and direct her correctly. You sound like a fool. See, look at what Paul said right here, man. We get out of here, man. First Corinthians chapter. These niggas sound like fools, man. You know what I'm talking about? Sound like fools. And y'all already know, man, the woman's a gift from your whore. And she's the most beautiful creature upon the face of the earth. That's why we look at the gracious and virtuous woman. Because she's a prize. She's, she's a far above rubies. If she don't feed your whore, she don't deserve no praise. 
You ain't you don't get praise because you got a vagina. That don't make you special. You only special when you fear your hood. You don't fear your hood, you ain't nothing but a bald headed hoe. That's all it come down to. That's all you is, just a bald headed hoe. First Corinthians 9 and 1. See, and the baby agreed. She said, I ain't gonna be no bald headed hoe. She said, I'm gonna be a good strong woman. Strong woman in the Lord. That's how I would raise. See, that's beautiful, but people don't realize. I got to get off the line, too, because I'm going over. He said, am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Yahushua Shah Hamashiach, our Lord? Are not you my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtlessly I am to you. For the seal of my apostleship are you in the Lord. My answer to them that do examine this. Have we not power to eat and to drink? He said, have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles? And as brethren of the Lord and of Cephas. And see, that's why, why do we read that? Because Paul said, don't I got power to lead about a wife and a sister? And truth be told, only reason he didn't mention his mother, because his mother should have a husband. But if your mama ain't got no husband, you got power to lead her too. But we'll come back and visit that. You know, hallelujah for y'all who shot in the word. I appreciate everybody. By the time I bless everybody at the house of Yahuwah. By way of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. But you know, we're going to continue on with that there because we're just not going to look at certain stuff like commandments and this, that, there. This is going to look at the nuances of things in regards to you having a leader and the commander of the house, who's the head of the house, who's the husband of the house, the husband whom we are to emulate. You know what I'm saying? And in that regard, we're going to see how certain things that he did with his wife, certain things that he did with his children, in that regard, and so therefore that we can ensure that we have much success, because when we when we take the gospel, hear it, believe in it, and implement it, then we show forth what Yahusha did with us. And therefore, the kingdom of Halahim is manifest on the earth and all men may know, trust and believe that Yahuwah is the living Elohim and Yahusha is his anointed one. Now, again, because I know somebody's going to hear this and they're going to hear what they want to hear. And I really don't care. And if you're offended, you know what I'm saying? Take that up with the Lord because, nigga, I don't care. Don't comment. Don't say nothing. Unsubscribe. Don't make me know. Never mind. But at the end of the day, it ain't about the police. It ain't about the United States government. It ain't about no white folk because we can't control them and what they do. We can't control them and how they think. But what we can control is our service to our Elohim and how we serve and please him. And how we follow our father's instructions or how we ought to navigate because we're members of his household and then we can live lives in peace. Remember, he said there's no peace to the wicked. So a lot of the things that happen to our people in this country, sadly, it happens to them because they are wicked. And it is just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. There's, there's nothing that I can do about that. That's not to cast dispersions on any of our people who don't know you. But you don't even know if our people who don't know you heard the gospel and rejected it. You just can't assume that everybody don't know. A lot of niggas done heard and said no. You understand? But if we say we are those of his household, then we should have the wisdom of Elohim and know how to move accordingly to make sure that our souls are delivered. To make sure that we emulate that strong man so that we may retain riches the same way that he has. Now, we talked about the strong, and I still got to get back to the eyes with the lamps of fire you who with him. But we'll get to the retaining of riches and everything that springs out of that. So, again, blessings out of the house of Yahuwah in the name of Yahuwah. I appreciate everybody. Yahuwah willing, I think we own, we have Regency this week. Y'all willing, uh, we pick it up on the Shabbat and take it from there. So, yeah. This nigga, <laughs> this nigga said, this nigga said, 